as Māori rather than relying on the government to to for your rangatiratanga. You need to have a rangatiratanga mindset. As a uh, researcher, right, you think, man, this, we're lucky. Oh, at the end of the two days, oh, it's actually fai mana, fai rawa, fai oranga, mm-hmm. wina. If that's not right, we're never going to be right. All the diaries, all the accounts say our people dominated commercial fishing. Steeped in your reo, steeped in your, um, you know, Māori culture, you can do anything in this world. Ko Maru Samuels tōku ingoa, uh, nō kōnei, uh, nō te mautere o Matakanda, uh, i te puake au i runga te mautere. Um, and uh, so, yeah, being involved with this project's come out of the Iwi Collective Partnership, uh, which is a collective of 19 Iwi from around, mainly around the North Island, uh, and lots of the Iwi from here in, in uh, Aukuri Awhare ki Tihira, the Bay of Plenty, Waiaraki. Um, and uh, started off as the CEO and uh, finished halfway through the project as CEO and now on the board uh, and being able to keep the project going uh, in our first uh, research project as the Iwi Collective Partnership, ICP. That's mm-hmm. me and... Kia ora, Aaron Kiri Amaroyo, tō kuingoa. Huri i tēnei o ngā puhi i nui tonu. Taia te ki pare hauraki. Nā, hoke ko Ngāti Mania Poto Ngāti Tuwhare Toa. Ngāti Rā Kaua ki te tonga. Hoki. So, I, uh, Maru and I are co-researchers, co-principal investigators on the project and I work uh, in a Kaupa Māori Research Centre, a, a couple actually, a couple of Kaupa Māori Research Centres and this project came about through a conversation between Maru and I around, um, what is the place of traditional Māori fisheries Values, practices, concepts. What does that world have to guide this world? Te ahu, uh, contempt of Māori fisheries. And uh, what are those contexts then? Um, either clash, conflict, or could sit well together. That the ICP in particular, largest collective of Māori fisheries uh, entities and interests, what is it that they can glean from that world to be able to guide where they go with the new waka, mm. if you like. Um, so that's Te Pātai uh, Tuatahi or Te Pātai Nui, yeah. Meki o tēnei, tēnei uh, uh, mahi, tēnei rangahau. Um, and so we chose, our process, we chose not to unfamiliar from other projects, but we chose to uh, do a literature review, to interview Mataranga Māori holders uh, and experts from the ICP whānau, uh, and then to uh, hold focus groups in Wānanga with all of the ICP members in the, in the room. Uh, and then also we chose to do some videography um, so each of the interviews were filmed uh, and the, the interviewer was a bit of a, oh, well, you know, he's a bit of a connoisseur, I guess, uh, of uh, Māori journalism, um, uh, Edu Edu Morgan, um, and we chose him because when we started the project, uh, the COVID restrictions hit us. Mm. We were trying to be contextual and go out into the rohe where our, you know, ICP members are from. Mm. Uh, COVID restricted us from doing that. And so we had set up studios in their homes and uh, Edu Edu in his home, um, trying to bring forward some kōrero in, mm. you know, an authentic way was quite um, mm. sort of disjointed. Uh, technology, if you like. Mm. So we need, needed someone that they would feel comfortable with. Eh? Mm. 
mm. straight away in terms of an online interview mm. and call mm. and be able to get into some pretty deep uh, mm. and conversations with someone that they trusted. Mm. So that was that was it. Because we talked a lot early on as our project team around authenticity mm. and what that looked like. Um, given that we knew that we were likely to encounter uh, real Māori speakers mm. more so than non-Māori speakers. And of course, we were talking to people who had been involved in the Sea Lords, Tree Settlements deal, so people who had been known, I guess, for their involvement in the early days of beginning this Māori commercial fisheries sector. Um, and we wanted to honour both them, where they were from, the richness of their corridor, and of course, the level of expertise and experience that they brought mm. uh, with their corridor. Mm. Um, so we tried with our technology to do a number of things to honour that corridor, and that became quite an important part of the project um, as opposed to what we or said because we thought that if we prepared the the baskets well enough for them then the contents would be held and restored and um, and and stored well mm. and and held well mm. and we also talked very early around the process of reciprocity how is it that we can hold that knowledge not disseminate it with disrespect or all of those kinds of issues that come up either ethically or, um, you know, in regards to, well, everybody wants to open the storehouse of Mataranga Māori, right? Everyone wants access to it in the public sector, in the government sector, even in, you know, in Pākehā research sector, they want to know what Māori think is yeah. going to work. Um, and we didn't want to do that. Mm. And so, as it turned out, as non real speakers, well, non native speakers, Maru and I. Um, Irene's okay, I'm pretty young. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but um, you know, uh, in the other, one of the big learnings for us from the um, ICP side of things um, was. Uh, you know, just having their guidance from Irene and, and Edward around how you do research and how you do it in the right way. Because, uh, you know, when I first came into this and had the idea, like I see we had that court at all and said, hey, you've been thinking about this part-time for a long time. And I, and I think it's really important and its relevance or its importance is growing, you know, just over time. As we look around us, the things that are happening around the world and, and, and here and even in our own backyard with our hapu and our whanau. And, uh, you know, I was like, hey, let's just get on with it. And our own's like, no, no, it's actually a way you do these things and, and good reason. And so, you know, it's been a, not just even setting aside the research itself and the rangaho and the, and the learnings from that, just the process learnings of how you do these things and why you do them in the right way. And so we're just so glad to have had uh, the right people guiding us um, uh, in those sorts of things. And that's, uh, really important. Sorry, I just had to say no, no, no. that. So that, especially in, in, and one of those was real. Like, hey, if the people we're going to to um, learn from and f you know ask them to share their their um, whakaro, their knowledge, their mātauranga with us, then uh, shouldn't we do that in the way that they want to do it? You know, so, hey, yeah, it makes sense to me. Even though ninety nine point nine percent of what they had to say went straight over the top of my head. I just knew, hey, this is the right way to do things. And we did that. And so glad, so glad we did it yeah. that way. Because, you know, conceptually, if you're asking for kōrero from the paipai, are you going to take that kōrero outside the atea into the car park hmm. and talk to others who ever walks past in the car park about what you just heard? Mm -hmm. and what you were just given in a kōrero. And the other thing I think too is the relationship between a researcher and and a mātauranga Māori holder 
doesn't just come just because we've got a research project funded. Mm. It came through Maru's connections. Mm. It came through the recognition of Maru's position in the fisheries sector and a whole other, mm. you know, multi-layered kind of... Uh, it is history. It is. Football ground, if you like, of connections, relationships, networks. Similarly to one of the research um, interviews we held where uh, one of our interviewees brought his kamata, his uncle, into the room, even though he could adequately answer the questions and do the interview, he brought his uncle into the room. Whoa, whole nother level. Mm -hmm. right? And that is what we regarded as a gift, but also the gift came with the real, the depth of real that they spoke. Mm -hmm. um, and if we had had anyone else other than, say, Eduida asking mm -hmm. the questions, we might have been come across as a bit light mm. on expertise ourselves, and they would not have been as comfortable as we think they were in giving us more and more and more, mm. other than just answering the question, mm. because Eduida could handle what the answers were from the kaumata and from the, you know, the first interviewer. We, we had our list of 10 questions, you know, <laughs> as you do. <laughs> but, but with Iruira, I mean, we were able to, we basically gave Iruira a license to, within those 10 questions, mm. bro, you just go wherever the corridor takes you. And mm. uh, eventually, you know, if it goes there, then um, just bring it back at the end and, and cover off the last few bits. But, you know, and, and he was, he, he just had that, ability to do that in those relationships and it's a pretty um magical stuff would you say that that was intrinsically you knew that that was the right approach because you were maori where, where where did that sort of different approach come from or is that quite unique uh, it came from our understanding of um work that academics and professors and researchers have done before our time, um, around Kopapa Māori frameworks, Kopapa Māori research, mm. um, and so if you think deeply into what is our process, what's, what's our research process? If we don't follow Kopapa Māori kind of guidelines, then you know you risk kahi katoa, na mm. na kore kahi katoa, or or maybe. Maybe you might risk somebody just giving you a shallow call at all. Mm. And then you've got to come back and sort of go, oh, you know, kind of make sense of a shallow call at all. And then you present your research findings and, mm. right? Mm. So um, fortunately for both Maru and I, we, um, we fuck up up to mm. a, an uncle who's passed now, grand uncle who's passed now, a Māori Marsden was his name, and Māori Marsden in 1992 wrote a book called The Woven Universe. And so we took from his kōrero in that book that the universe is woven into past and present, and that there is, in the universe, not a strong sense of past and present. That's what we took from the book and a whole lot of other things. But if we think about the woven universe, that's what came out of the interviews. The interviews basically said, well, we don't just fish from the sea and the land activities are something else altogether. Mm. We don't just use our maramataka just to sit around with our mates and go, oh, you know, what does the maramataka teach us about today? Maramataka was intrinsic in all of the corridor that we came mm. back with. Mm. And for for uh, uh, for you know, for a lot of our, our team members we were kind of just sort of made to sit on our seats and go, Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. we didn't really know what we were opening up actually. Wow, yeah. So in terms of the Maramataka and the utilization of the sea and the land, it's all in sync, right? Mm. And that balance means that when you're harvesting from the land, like your potatoes or your kumara, mm. that's the time that there would be 
in different regions and harvest time in the sea. Mm -hmm. And we don't recognise that, I think, strongly. And some of that kōrero, we know that, you know, that's not common kōrero, even just amongst us as Māori. And even even the uh, interviewees, um, <clears throat> uh, Irene talked about some of them uh, having knowledge around the Sea Lord deal and the Māori fishery settlement, all those sorts of things. And, and you know, so the weird people that were there talking to us about that. Um, and when... Uh, another interview talking to us, talking to us about life on the water because he's been out of the water. That's, he's lived his life on the water. Another one talked to us about growing up, um, living on, uh, under and in the sea. You know, as as a as a young uh, person growing up and and living off the sea. So, uh, you know, you could imagine the richness of the uh, or mm. uh, that these people were happy and willing to share I guess it comes from Hopapa. I guess it comes from fiako, eh, from experience it's not learned you know what I mean yeah. it's lived yeah. Yeah. I am this this is what we're after mm. and, and and in terms of the, the research and, and the project and the fisheries you know that, that's got a lot of whakapapa mm. a lot of whakapapa a lot of stakeholders a lot of you know interest um, would love to hear about sort of you know some of the you know, the, the neke neke hunger, the movements, you know, some of the kōrero, but also um, would love to know what was the goal, you know, what is the goal, what is the purpose of, you know, this this research and the collection of... I, I, I could, uh, I have a, have a crack at that. Um, uh, the goal is to, you know, so we, we um, uh, the 2004, the Māori Fisheries Act was passed and that legislation paved the way for the fisheries treaty settlement assets to go back to iwi um and so that happened pretty quickly from 2005 2006 onwards to the point now where um i think it's something like 56 out of the 58 have received most of their fishing assets there's only a couple of iwi that are that are yet to, to get their assets back um so we get back our assets as iwi as tribes and um uh, we're now in a new industry that we've most of us have been out of for a hundred years. You know, there's a few farmers that managed to stay involved in commercial fishing over the last um, uh, 50, 60 years, but the majority of iwi are now getting back assets in an industry that they've never been in. Uh, we know kiwi fruit pretty well. Uh, we know how to grow trees. Um, we know how to milk cows, but the whole commercial fishing industry was a new, uh, a new beast. You know, we used to we used to rule and reign it way back in the day. Massive gap where we were forced out, and we and we deal with uh, some of this in our in our research around the you know, the impacts of colonisation. Mm -hmm. um, and then we get back to today where we now have these assets, and we're just trying to survive. Mm -hmm. You know, we're just trying to stay off the uh, front page of the Herald. You know, making some silly mistakes. Um, and after a decade for for our collective of 19, after a decade, we're like, oh, I think we feel comfortable enough about how this thing works now, where we need to now go back to this thing about tikanga and our identity and who we are as Māori and how we, uh, you know, how we roll, how we live our lives, and um, how do we reconcile that again mm. back into the way uh, that we fish. We, we know once upon a time our, our tūpuna would have done that naturally, they would have had their mātauranga, their reo, their tikanga, and applied it back. Because uh, we know our people were successful when, uh, you know, when the Europeans first arrived. All the diaries, all the accounts say our people dominated commercial fishing. And this is a quietly, you know, not too many people know this story, but um, it's there, it's in the tribunal reports, it's all in the research. Our people were really good at, um, at uh, commercial fishing. Uh, we lost a lot of that. We're now back into it, but how do we yeah get back to that? I guess wholeness, mm. and that's where the um, uh, the name to our research comes in. Kia tika te hi ika. You know how do we how do we bring those things back together again? And um, yeah, that's really what the research is about. And um, so then we learn that, uh, and we. Uh, recover or, or relearn this 
tick on it and then we get to apply it we begin to apply it to actually specific issues that we're faced with um uh bottom trawling mm. is a big one right that we all have views on majority of people have views on and half the room uh supports it the other half doesn't um discards our impacts on mammals uh in a whole raft of different issues within the commercial fishing industry uh we need to get to a point or we want to get to a point where we we have a, a framework and that we're guided by our tikanga values within how we approach those different uh challenges those different issues mm. so that's 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 the goal it's beautiful yeah it's really a re reconciliation a reconnection which is, you know, happening with our fisheries, but also just across the board for a lot of our Māori, our Māori people, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so not not new in, in the world, wide world sense, but um, I think quite new in terms of just applying it within the commercial fishing context. And I just I just have a pātai around because it piqued my interest when you said that you spoke to, you know, holders of mātauranga. Do you feel like right now in, 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 in sort of our our generations, there's still that matauranga that, that we can, you know, that the tua papa's still there, that we can rekindle, you know, what we've somewhat lost, you know, in the... Hey, Dari, are we just have a call little about this this morning. be <laughs> 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 <That's right, Dari. laughs> For this one. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a tricky one. But um, I think that because we have been able to rangaho and to record some of this material and other projects are recording um, their material as well. I think, um, you know, as researchers, we already understand that Mātauranga Māori is, uh, is, is, a, is, a, is a broken set of kite right now uh, in terms of some of this really deep stuff. We know that there are pockets of it and most of us are trying to put different pockets together in other areas. Um, I think the also we need to think about or have an awareness about um, is around the treatment of it once we pull it together. And I think we're very aware that with a science challenge, um, you could be looked at in terms of being funded to gather mātauranga for other purposes and for other audiences as opposed to our next generations. Mm. We hope that this is a safe platform and we have the you know ethical approval from our iwi members to reply to the science challenge um, in terms of the research questions. But like we said at the beginning, what we did with the real mm. interviews is we did not provide transcripts, English transcripts, and we did not provide um, the interviews per se or the recordings and audios of the interviews back to the science challenge to disseminate. Mm -hmm. We gave them or we are giving them back as a gift to the ICP members to those iwi that provided that cordial, and we have recorded a research mm. report on some of the findings, some of the conceptual findings, some of the conceptual cordial, as opposed to those transcripts. Because, for example, uh, one of the speakers or one of the in people we interviewed um, replied to our set of questions, our entire set of questions uh, in a whakapapa and pai pai structured kōrero. Wow. Twice. So we asked the first set of questions, then we thought, okay, now we need to ask, you know, the questions we asked everybody else, i.e., you know, what are your thoughts on bottom trawling and those sorts of practices. He took a few minutes and again he stood up and he, his answer was whakapapa. Heke, 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 my tangaroa, my io tangaroa, heke, heke, wow. kia tātai tēnei wā. That was his answers. Hmm. And so, again, to honour 
the corridor, the way in which it was given, and where it came from, we had to think seriously as researchers mm. about how do we provide protections around that information not being taken out of its context. Yeah, 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 definitely. And the nature in which it was given and presented. So we mm. have it on video, we have a transcription of what was said, and we have a... Um, um, a recording, really, of the findings and analysis of that interview. However, there is a different or another version, not a different mm. version, mm. another version that is in the provided for a public yeah. in the report mm. for a public audience because we felt our primary audience was the ICP. Mm. However, there are some, you know, some some requirements of the of the science challenge. But again, just to be so that we are intergenerationally honouring mm. Matauranga. So it's not just a, um, I guess, a new toy. Yeah. Or taken out of context and rewritten. And yeah, there was. This... Yeah, well, one of the things I've always been um, mindful of taking on this research is, um, you know, um, a lot of these questions, issues, and views around um, commercial fishing are quite polarised. Mm. They're quite um, emotive. And, um, you know, the reality is there are a lot of people out there just wanting to grab something that they can then use in the arguments. And, yeah. and we're mindful of that. And um, we don't want, um, you know, these gems and, and uh, that have been shared with us being taken and just used... Mm you know, to fuel someone else's debate. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so we've got to really be careful in how we treat and look after and protect. Māori Marsden said in 92, myths and legends in the Māori cultural context are neither fables embodying primitive faith in the supernatural, nor are they marvellous fireside stories of ancient times. They were deliberate constructs employed by the an ancient seers and sages or wisdom holders to encapsulate and condense into easily assimilable forms of their world view of the ultimate reality and the essential relationship between the creator, the universe and humanity. Cultures, pattern, perceptions, of reality into conceptualizations of what they perceived were reality were to be what is to be regarded as actual, probable, possible or impossible. These conceptualizations form what is termed the Māori worldview. Mm. And so we want to honour that. We want to honour that and the depth of that corridor by doing this. Mm. And essentially, if you know, if anything, the ICP um, not so much have been given through this research but report a whole lot of solutions mm. or a whole lot of rules or a whole lot of guiding points, but possibly uh, opening Te Ao Māori even more mm, kia ora. to the possibilities. It's, a, it's a, you know, one of the ways I look at it, it's, it's an educational experience it's an educational process for those of us that that don't have the real mm. it's actually just before you can talk about whether something's right or wrong you actually just got to understand mm. you know and and that's what i love about this project and what i'm seeing coming of it mm, definitely mm. it's that um you know it's a bit of tua kanatena aha koto tūru, aha koto yeah you know ceo yep. head researcher you know it's like oh well I'll, we sit down we listen you know what i mean yeah. and we are the you know we are yes. We are blessed. We are getting, you know, Matauranga and Taonga Tukuiho is essentially what it is. Right. Taonga Tukuiho. Um, but really just like fascinated by the corridor and, and both of the work that you've put in, plus your teams. It's it's fantastic. And I love the way that you're really intentional about mm. the Matauranga because mm. as I just said, it's a Taonga, you know what I mean? Corridor, Taonga. Corridor, right. Tapu. You know right. what I mean? So me Tapu, na hold na Corridor. Aye. You know, so yeah, really appreciate it. But I guess just to just to wrap things up and um, you know, really talk about 
the 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 next generations you know yeah. like we really want to have a bit of focus on sort of you know tips uh, suggestions you know things learnings that you've had as a as a researcher as a as a you know as a board member as a ceo as a part of the fisheries which has got you know a lot of fuck up up for our our iwi you know what what are some sort of i guess the parting words <laughs> perhaps to our youngsters out there mm. i think um you know, I think Kohanga Reo Kura Kaipapa Whare Kura generation um, have just as much challenges as we've had in terms of looking at, I think it's been said, you know, the paucity of Mataranga Māori, the paucity of it, mm. um, the challenges gathering it together in a not so much broken form but in pieces and somebody also said too that you know if you if you if you break an egg hmm, you break the egg shell um putting it back together is near on impossible um if you don't have an idea of what the shape and form of it was before it became broken and so challenge mm. to you know, the, the real speaker's generation um, really is to bind those things together mm. that we know that, um, you know, your ears and eyes are open to. And I think the expectations to of um, new generations in terms of that the world, the Māori world is safe in the Māori world or the Māori world view is intact and ours because we have rights to have it unbroken. Um, I like the fact that that's an expectation. Mm. I like the fact that that is, you know, something that is commanded to be there, um, you know, because from our perspective, even our experience in the project, um, it's, it's there, but we still have to kind of work out what we do with it. And, you know, we've gone to lots of different places, I think, with the interviews. We've gone to lots of different places with finding the right person and people to talk to. And sometimes, you know, as you know, you're just led there. Mm. You're just led there by by whatever you want to call it. Um, and I think it's it's probably ongoing work to keep finding those conversations and keep finding those people, those mātanga, real mm. mātanga, you know, experience on the ground. And, you know, just parting, uh, a closing statement was really just to think about our kaumātua that we interviewed who said something like seven, close to seven uh, types of kaumōna that he ate and gathered as a child are not there anymore. Um, some of those kinds of kōrero in our interviews kind of make you just sort of stop and realise the, you know, the, the, the hugeness of the challenge before us. Mm -hmm. Even though we've got big Māori entities and, 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 you know, big asset holders and some of them got, you know, million dollar profit sheets. Mm -hmm that statement kind of stops you mm. in your in your tracks and you think, oh, yep, mm. yep, mm. okay. The world still changes regardless of how we go about gathering our mātauranga together. Mm. And we, we still have to think about that. Mm. Um, I think I think for me, um, you know, thinking about our, our rangatahi, I, I think we're in good hands. That's the way I, uh, and I, you know, getting back to the real... Right now, to see you know Irene's moko and and uh, and uh, my nephews and nieces and um, you know we we when good that's changed from my generation uh, a lot of my um, brothers and sisters don't call it all uh, and and that's changing and that's changing when we look at the next generation so uh, and a lot of what we're doing here is kind of finding a way I think to plug the gap. Uh, I think, you know, there's an obligation for us, this current generation, to ensure we don't lose any more 
and what can we do to at least um you know pull together what's what we still have and hold that in a position until these younger ones come through mm. and um you know, and I, I think that's a that's a good day, but that's our that's our obligation part of this research today. It's just to make sure we don't lose any more. The rains and hopefully Irene and I can still be a part of that. Will keep us on board. Hey, Irene. Oh, what came out to us? We'll still have something to contribute. <laughs> but um, but yeah, it's we we're in good hands. Awesome, come by. I'm here, Naki Akorua, Tina, Tina Akorua, me and Korua, and um, yeah, thank you for finding some time to to bestow some wisdom and share your research with us. Kill it, Kapai. All right.